Lord Shiva and Lady Parvati live in harmony on Mount Kalaisa, up in the Himalayas. It's a pleasant little cottage in a sunny glen. And at one time, Parvati said to Shiva, I, I know I've said this many times before, but wouldn't you like to have the pitter-patter of little feet around the cottage? Wouldn't you like to have a child that we could dote upon? And Shiva said, why, yes, that would be lovely, dear, someday. <laughs> But right now, I think I'm going to take some time off for myself and uh, go up higher up in the peaks and have some me time. And this he did. He whistled out for his mount, his steed, mm -hmm. Nandi the bull. And Nandi came up and Shiva mounted and off they went. And it wasn't terribly long after that Shiva was consulting with the devas, other devas from above, and occasionally a, a respectful asura from below, and practicing yoga and enjoying the, the brisk weather. Parvati, on the other hand, had little to do at that particular juncture. She was pretty much done with everything that she felt she was obligated to. And she was still feeling a bit heartsick because she wanted a child. Now she knew that long ago she and Shiva had intertwined their spirits such that she could draw some on his as well as her own is this her access to Shakti the universal energy of the feminine and so she sat down in their bedroom with her cosmetics case in front of her and she stared and finally she pulled out a pot, and from it she dipped a mass of sandalwood paste. And began to fiddle with it. And then inspiration hit, and she began to form it into the form of a small child. And for her finishing touches, she took a scraper and scraped what had already been applied to her skin off and applied it to the small figure, added some water from the Ganges, and then kissed the figure, and it came to life, and she named the child Ganesh. Now Ganesh was a bright and active child, and rather quickly, as such things go, able to run about and laugh and chatter. And he loved his mother dearly. Meanwhile, Shiva finally came to the conclusion that, you know, it had been a long time since she'd, he'd been home. He kind of felt it was time to come back and see his wife. So he bid farewell to those he'd been conversing with. Rose found Nandi and mounted and started his way home. About that time, Parvati said to little Ganesh, Darling son, I am going to take a nice long hot bath. Be a good little son and guard mom's front door while she's enjoying a nice hot bath. And little Ganesh said, I shall do so. It is my pleasure. 
and he grabbed a spear from one of the walls that was where it had been mounted, and he began to pace in front of the cottage. Left, dum, 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 back, two, three, four, left. And you have this little figure walking back and forth in front of the cottage, and it's a great big long spear, and he turns, and the spear wobbles in a great big circle, and he goes back the other way. And back and forth and back and forth. Meanwhile, Shiva is riding along and he sees the cottage. And there's this little dot wobbling in front of the cottage. One, two, 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 swoop, two, three, four, swoop, two, three. What the heck was the, the, the cottage under attack or something? Uh, the the Asura is out in, in, in revolt again? What's going on? So he, he gets a little closer and he dismounts and he sees this tiny tiny being with this great big long spear that looks mighty familiar guarding the front door. And he walks up and he says, I do not have time for this. I want to see my wife. Get out of my way, little one. Well, Ganesh saw Shiva. And he stopped in front of him and he planted the spear. And he said, my mother is bathing. You shall not disturb her. Shiva said, I want to see my wife. And I, I really don't want to do anything to you, but you must get out of my way. And little Ganesh said, my mother is bathing, and you will not pass. And Shiva was never one known for extensive amounts of patience, so he grabbed his trident and he swooped it across, sending poor little Ganesha's head flying off into the heavens. Well, having heard the... hubbub outside the cottage. Parvati came out with a towel wrapped around her. And she looked at the little body on the ground. And she looked at Shiva. And she said, Shiva, what have you done? That is our son, Ganesh. And Shiva looked down. He looked at her. Son? And like many a husband in many a bit of hot water, his response was, I'll fix this! <laughs> and leaving the tiny body in Parvati's care, he went hunting. Now, all around, north, south, east, west, he traveled long, long distances. No true appropriate replacement head came to his attention. And much wearied one night, he settled in and realized that he was right down the road from an elephant, an elderly, elderly elephant who had collapsed, apparently, not far from the road. And Shiva said, Lord Elephant, how are you doing this evening? And the elephant said, Oh, great Shiva. Creator and destroyer of worlds, I honor you. But I cannot appropriately bow before you, for I, I am old. I have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren all roaming these jungles and doing well. But I am old, and I have fallen, and I shall not be rising again. And Shiva looked at the elephant, his wrinkled brow of wisdom, the great sensitive ears, the agile trunk, the piercing, piercing, delicate eyes. And he said, Lord Elephant, your time is approaching. When you have finished with it, may I have your head? And the elephant said, Oh, Lord Shiva, you may have whatever you desire. It is an honor to, be, to provide you with such. And so it was by morning, 
the elephant had started his spiritual journey elsewhere. And Lord Shiva took the head. And he took it back to Mount Kalaisa, and there he met with Parvati, with the little body in her arms. And he said, place him before you. And she did. And she took the, he took the head, and he placed it down on the little shoulders. And blessed it. And wonder of wonders, the little body began to fill out. And the head began to alter. Until it and the body became one. And the eyes opened. And the now stout, hefty little child stood up. And said, Lord Shiva and Lady Parvati, my parents, it is good to see you again. And ever since, should you happen to see images of Ganesh, statues, paintings, and whatnot, there are differences amongst them. But one thing they all agree on, he has a happy smile, a wise brow, sensitive ears, and an agile trunk. And the elephant head continues to be his Signature trait, amongst others. Thank you. <laughs>